Echo Tower, this is uh, Cessna 150, Golf Master Delta Hotel at 2,500 feet uh, by the uh, nuclear power station coming in. Full information uniform coming in for uh, low pass back to city center. And Golf Master Delta Hotel Tower, Roger, runway 30 is the active, altimeter is 3010. Clear to left downwind and report established on the downwind. Uh, moving forward, uh, when uh, established on the left downwind, we're on the way to reach zero for Carl Foster Delta Hotel. Thank you. I shall tell her, Carl Foster Delta Hotel, established on the left downwind, we're on the way to reach zero. Thank you. Hey, Fox Road Delta Hotel Tower, Roger, number one. Number one, Carl Foster Delta Hotel. Thank you. Extra Delta Hotel Tower, after departure, left turn southwest bound, wind is 340 at 5, clear to approach runway 30. After departure, left turn uh, uh, out uh, is uh, turning down base and clear for uh, low approach, Golf Foster Delta Hotel, thank you. This is Golf Foster Delta Hotel, uh, clearing the zone, uh, heading back to city center. Thank you. Foster Delta Hotel Tower, Roger, changed on route frequency. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is uh, Golf Foster Delta Hotel, 2000. Heading down, um, aging your side at 2000 feet. Please uh, help me. Um, uh, 2,000 feet, uh, two engines, the engine is completely tight. I'm gliding right out to the speed, I'm getting inbound. Dr. Delta Hotel, what area are you over? I just had, I just left the zone right now, I'm looking at the... Uh, gliding at 60 knots, engine just died right now. Uh, there's a highway, there's a street here, I don't know if I should uh, land here, I'm on the street here, where should I land, god damn it. Foxtrot Delta Hotel, just watch for traffic and land wherever you think you can safely land, and get in touch with me once you're down safely. We are on the, in the middle of the street. See this highway, I don't know, it's, it's, it's dying, it's dying this plane right now. You gotta be kidding me here. I'm very close to you, uh, like, I'm entering the zone right now. I'm entering the zone. Okay, Fox Road Delta Hotel Tower, Roger. Do whatever you need to do to land safely. Oh my god, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. What am I gonna land, land, land here? Okay, from Gulf Bravo Tower, Cruise Land, 3-0. I'm, I'm in the road here. There's some cars here. I can't, I need to land. God damn it. Fox Road Delta Hotel, land wherever you can safely, sir. Delta Hotel, are you on frequency at all? Oh, wow. It's really a plane. Hope everyone's okay. The thing is, it's no way to, um... How do you land that here? Wings are all torn up and tattered. Oh, yeah, shit. And the thing is, like from up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he hit that. Look at that dangling. And look at that one. So, what direction did he come if he hit the light? So, I'm really glad this pilot got down safely and was uninjured because then we can chuckle a little bit at a couple of his radio calls, which were kind of humorous, you've got to admit. Um, even though he was presented with one of the nightmare scenarios that all pilots face, which is an engine out 
at night over a congested area. I mean, that was a pretty packed city. That's why a lot of guys won't fly single engine at night or IFR, but you know, that's because of just this incident. But there's a couple things we can take away from this. Number one, when pilots have an emergency, it's very natural for them to want someone in authority to swoop in and save the day and tell them what to do. You know, tell me what to do. What, you know, I've got an emergency. You got to remember, that's not ATC's job. That's your job. Their job is just to keep everybody out of your way if you're going to make it back to the airport. Aside from that, you're on your own. Uh, especially if you're not going to make it back to the airport area. There's there's nothing they can do. There's not even any point in making a radio call to air traffic control if you've got an engine out, unless you're landing in a remote area and they're the only ones that are going to call emergency services for you. Call 911. If you're landing in a congested city like this, you don't need to tell ATC you're going down because... After you crash, you're probably going to have a dozen people calling 911. So you don't need their help at all. And you're just wasting time and concentration. If you get an engine out over a city like this and you're far from the airport, you're not going to make it. 100% of your concentration needs to be going to finding a place to land and getting down safely. As a matter of fact, if you're going down in a congested area, you should probably just turn the radio off. That way you don't get distracted by any questions that Control Tower or ATC might have for you. I mean, they're just human like everybody else. They're going to want to try to help you. They're going to ask you where you are, what's going on. They can't help you. It's all up to you at that point. You know, remember that just a few days ago, about 10 days ago, there was a caravan that went down on the East Coast, Just uh, I think it's just a part of Dulles, and put it down on a road. Very successfully, by the way. No one was injured. He just dinged the prop a bit and one of the tires. But you'll notice in all the YouTube reviews that everybody put out, there was no radio communication between him and the tower prior to them coming to a complete stop. Because... He was busy. He, he, There's no reason for him to talk to Tower. He Right after takeoff, he looked like he was about 1,000 feet up, engine out. Boom. Okay, where am I going to land? Look back, you know, the, the area going back to the airport environment was all fully, it was wooded, you know, high big trees. Not, not a smart move. He saw a road, put it down there. No reason to talk to anybody. Just get, get business taken care of, get the plane down safely. Once he was on the ground, I loved it. Then he told his co-pilot, hey, you want to, by the way, tell I'll tell Tower we're on the ground, and uh, she did that. The Tower had no idea anything had happened, and they didn't need to know. It was none of their damn business. He had work to do, and he did it, and that's what you need to do if you're going down in a congested area. Just land the plane. Find a place, land it safely, tell them afterwards. Now, the second thing we can take away from this is how to not panic and keep your calm in the event of an emergency situation. Now, I know that's really easy for me to say sitting here in my office, but I've actually had way more than my fair share of in-flight emergencies over the years. And the one thing that I've learned having survived all those situations is if you want to be successful, you have to find a way to remain calm and work the problem. Now, I know it's a very natural reaction for a pilot to respond to a sudden emergency to have some panic and some fear. I mean, yeah, you know, we're not made of stone, but you have to learn how to take that panic and that natural reaction and just set that aside, just put it in the co-pilot seat and don't look at that for now and focus on the problem, find a way out and find a way to get the plane down safely. Once you're back on the ground, then you can re-examine that panic and have yourself a little a little heart attack and you know, deal with that then. But while you're in the air, you have to find some way to take a deep breath remain calm, and get the plane back on the ground safely. I mean, if you want to go through the seven stages of grief, make it snappy because you got work to do. Over the years, I developed a little saying that I tell all the pilots that I train. If you've got time to panic, you've got time to do something more productive. And that leads me to the last part um, of what we can take away from this is landings. Now, I see a lot of pilots, and I hear them talking about when they're practicing their landings, how much flaps they use. A lot of them are saying, I don't use hard landing flaps or maybe 20 degrees max. That gives them the smoothest, softest landing. And I think they're practicing the wrong thing for the most part. Yep, when you're learning, it's very important to learn how to touch down nice and soft and smooth. But 
you need to be practicing for the bad days, not the good days. Um, your landings, the most important thing for a landing is not that it's pretty, it's that it's accurate and short because someday you're going to need that skill. Whenever I'm landing on every single approach, unless I've got passengers that I'm trying to impress, I'm practicing my emergency landings. You know, I've got a couple of things that I do, a little game that I play. Like if I, whenever I take power off in the middle of a landing, if I have to put it back in, that count that as points against me. That means I've screwed up. And I'll often do just a simulated engine out. I'll be come in with enough air, enough energy to go to almost idle at a beam the numbers and try to put it down on the numbers. I'm looking for accuracy and a short rollout. Because someday you're going to need that, like this pilot did in, uh, in Canada a couple days ago. You know, you're going to have an engine out. You're going to have to put it down in somebody's, you know, backyard or on a city street or on a football field or something like that. And you're not going to come cruising in with 20 degrees flaps trying to make the smoothest landing possible. No, you're going to need to plonk this sucker down right on the spot that you need, like the beginning of the, your landing area, and honk on the brakes and get it stopped before you hit the obstacle at the end. So that's what I think pilots need to practice more. Not pretty landings, short, accurate landings. And let's go back and talk, to, talk about this guy that uh, had the engine out in the 150. I mean, it's pretty funny. A couple of his comments were kind of, kind of amusing, and we can laugh because he actually did a great job. But you could hear the panic in his voice. I mean, he actually asked uh, the control tower, what should I do? Where should I go? And she just kept saying, I don't know, man. Find a, Do whatever you got to do to get down safely. And he, he couldn't believe that he was in that situation. There's that denial stage of the seven stages of grief and was having a hard time dealing with it. But he powered through it. He finally realized that she wasn't going to help him. Nothing, you know, he had to do this himself. And kudos to him for finding a road, not stalling the plane. A lot of pilots in this situation, they can't bring themselves to crash an airplane. They keep pulling back and pulling back. I don't want to go down. Nope, this guy didn't stall the plane, put it down on that road. Right next to some pretty big power lines. You'll see in the, uh, the video that somebody shot on the ground. There's some pretty big power lines there. Looks like he clipped a traffic light and, you know, he dinged both, both wingtips, but got it on the ground. Nothing else looks broken. Bravo. Marvelous job because engine out in a small plane at night over a congested city. That's one of the nightmare scenarios that most pilots never, ever want to face. Most pilots, all pilots, nobody wants to face that. Now, luckily for him, he was in a Cessna 150, which after a small tail dragger like a Cub is the perfect plane for a scenario like that because it's got a really slow slow stall speed and you can put it down in a really short area. You know, it doesn't have a lot of mass, so it stops really quick. Um, but no, great job on this guy. Well done. Uh, <laughs> thank. I really got to appreciate those. are some pretty funny comments. Oh, geez, you know. Um. After that, the only last thing I got to say is you guys need to practice this more. Do what I do. I've got Microsoft Fight Simulator. I've also got X-Plane. Cheap joystick. Practice your engine out dead stick landings. You'd be surprised how much better you get at it with just a little bit of practice. You learn how to control your energy. Pick that landing spot. You can practice so much stuff that you can't practice in real life for there. Because remember, you're practicing for the bad days, not the good days. All right, well, that's all I got. You guys uh, have a good rest of your weekend. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and support the channel. And as always, keep your speed up.